still known to many as Fretlin, the armed wing of the independence movement now refers to itself as Fallentil. There's probably only 500 guerrillas in the forests and mountains of East Timor, but their support network is enormous. They have thousands of people in reserve and tens of thousands of villagers support them with food and finances. The Indonesian military are camped just a few kilometres away on the next mountain peak. The nearest militia group would be less than two days' walk from here. But the commander of this unit, Falo Rate Like, is under orders to do nothing but watch and wait. Falo has been a guerrilla for 20 years, 20 years of being hunted, 20 years of struggling to attract new fighters to his unit. All he could offer was near certain death for an unlikely victory. The flux of new recruits. In the villages, people began to talk openly about independence, and the reprisals against the most outspoken of them began in July. As the militias and soldiers began their crackdown, dozens of young people began joining Fallentil in the jungle. The new recruits didn't just bring civilian habits with them. They brought eyewitness accounts of brutalities by Arbri and the pro-integration militias in the surrounding areas. In late October, Falo struck. A few days later, Falo struck again. This film was shot by one of Falo's soldiers as they moved out of the jungle and gathered near the town of Alas. The Arbri soldiers stationed in Alas had begun searching for and arresting villagers who they suspected of supporting Fallentin. As the guerrillas marched towards the village, some of the young people of Alas saw them coming. But each of them had their reasons not to alert the Indonesians. There were 14 Indonesian soldiers in and around the Alas base. Three Indonesians were killed in the battle, and as the Fallentil guerrillas began to pin down the other 11, many of the young people of Alas, after years of pent-up fury, began to join in the attack. Fallentil prevented a massacre. 
the 11 soldiers were captured and later released. But if there was one event last year which galvanised Arbery's relationship with the militia groups, it was this attack. Civilians were now clearly a threat. Infuriated by the loss of an arsenal of weapons and the deaths of their soldiers, Arbery's retaliation was swift. Eight civilians are known to have been killed by Arbery and Alas, and dozens of others are still missing. But Arbery's actions didn't go unnoticed. They were loudly condemned around the world. And it was from this point that the proxy war began, and the militias became Arbery's weapon.